Hey, 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 we're back. .NET Conf 2018. I'm here with Kathleen Dollard. I am Beth Massey. I am the product marketing manager for the .NET platform. And Kathleen. Hi, I'm a project ma uh, program manager, I'm sorry, on uh, the .NET Core uh, team. And I do uh, CLI SDK. I do some languages stuff and some other things. But today, I'm just doing .NET Core, SDK, and CLI. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so I just want to say, Kathleen, I have been, like, you've been my hero, <laughs> my .NET hero. Uh, I've known Kathleen uh, since I started .NET programming back wow. in 2002. Wow. Uh, I bought a book of yours, and you uh, it was Code Generation was, in .NET. Yeah. And um, over the years, like, I, I met you. I remember meeting you mm -hmm. and just being like, oh, my God, this is Kathleen Dollard. <gasps> Whoa. And then uh, we got to know each other. Yeah. We became friends. We got our ears pierced together. We did. We, I we have been, yeah. We've had piercings together. Yeah, we've yeah. had piercings together. I mean, like, so. Yeah, um, really and now you're here. Today. And you're at Microsoft now. Now I work so for Microsoft. Now you yeah. work for Microsoft. Yeah. So how's yeah. it, how's it been, been, been here so far? for a year. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So it has been fantastic. Um, I just can't say enough good things about the folks I work with. Okay. I work with so many smart, good people that have so many great ideas. And uh, we just try to find time to execute on enough of them. So, That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so you're working on the .NET Core tools, is that what CLI? Yeah, so okay. the, the CLI stands for command line uh, interface, so okay. it's the tools. It's when you're typing uh, stuff, and you know, I've been around, I'm old, I've been around forever, and it's like I would never have thought that I would be back doing this typing command line <laughs> stuff, especially that I'd be The world comes full it circle, and, doesn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it does. It's amazing, <laughs> absolutely amazing. But it's because it's an efficient way to get things done, and that's yeah. why we've come back to it um, after a long journey. You know, there was decades where you could program without really hardly ever typing at a command line. And you still can if you're working in Visual Studio, but it's really helpful to be able to drop down to the command line, if, even if you're a Visual Studio developer. And if you're a Visual Studio code, you generally will be dropping to the command line or if you use a different editor, because so you don't does have Visual, to use one of our editors. Does Visual Studio like use the command line at the core, or you like know, is it kind of like is it directing it, or? Well, you know, it, de it depends a little bit on what you're doing, but in general, not. Okay. Um, because in general, what we've got is a wrapper inside Visual Studio uh, for the things that are being done, and then the CLI is another wrapper. Ah, and okay. rather than having two wrappers, we sort of shortcut things. And then there's a few things like uh, MS Build that I'll talk about that are actually a little bit different, okay. uh, it, depending on which direction you're using. So Fair just enough. a little bit different uh, approach. But it's good to know what the CLI is doing, so you really kind of know what Visual Studio kind of does, and you know a little bit more about how things work, right? I think that's true, especially for things like uh, like Publish. But a lot of it really parallels fairly closely uh, okay. what you what you do. Publish okay. is a little bit different, um, and then there's a little bit, uh, you're a little bit clearer on when you're doing a pack, um, okay. and restore can now be a little bit more explicit. So there's gotcha. some things that are just okay. more direct, okay. um, but cool. it's the same stuff. There's not, it's not new concepts, it's just new ways of accessing Looks like the .NET bot concepts. uses the CLI, the actually. Bot, Give me some .NET, .NET bot, people. I love the .NET bot. Yes, I like I big bots, it. and I cannot lie. Let's go, people. Yeah, yeah all right. We got bots, .NET yeah, bots yeah, yeah, on yeah. the Twitch uh, stream. Just now. might if we have time to show you a bot. Might, we might show a bot Might later. show the bot. Okay, cool. Yeah, I might show a bot later. All right, .NET bot. Yeah. All right, let's get to, uh, let's get your presentation there, then. Why don't, right. we, why don't we get started, all right? Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to start out talking about uh, talking about how you pick your SDK. Okay. It's something called global.json that some people know a lot about, and some people misunderstand, and some people have never ever heard of. So let's start with global.json. Okay. So this is a file on your uh, in your project in your repo that's going to say what SDK you're going to pick. So let's take a look at the uh, command line. We'll jump down here for a minute. Uh, and I'll start out by just saying .NET, and when you want to know what's going on, dash dash help is always great. So then you can find out what's available. In this case, what we want to do, because uh, we want to look at a global.json, is I'm going to create, actually first let me just create a new directory. That seems like such a logical thing to do. And uh, I'll just call it .NET Conf, and I'll just go, to, go into that directory. Now, I'm going to create a, uh, a, a global.json file just to show you one quick way to create it, which is .NET new. Um, and .NET new will always uh, create whatever it is next if I wanted to do. Um, I'm just going to do dash "-h". I can get a list of the templates that are available. Cool. So right now what oh, I want to do... Oh, there's a lot do, of them. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. And there's a lot more available um, that are on NuGet. 
Uh, you can go to NuGet and search for, for templates. We are working on a better experience for being able to find both templates and the global tools I'll talk about later. Okay. Uh, right now, those are uh, a little bit harder work than obviously would be uh, great. So I'm going to say uh, .new global.json. I think I have to say global.json. Uh, maybe it's supposed to just be one word. I'm looking under that uh, second column near the bottom, and it says global JSON. So I'll just make it one word. OK, so it says it was successfully created. And based on that, and I'm just going to, uh, let me see if I can pull the bottom of that up just a little bit. Uh, it's not behaving itself very well. Um, I just want to bring that up a little bit so it's not sitting quite there at the bottom you of your screen, just in case somebody's got, hey, you know, I can bring that up and show off .NET Cuff for oh, good. you. We can put our pretty that. faces back there. Then. Look at that. Look at that and get the bot there for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have set code up so that I can just say code dot. Um, and that's going to let me take a look at the uh, at the actual uh, code of the global.json I just made. Okay, so all it does is say a version. Um, and let me make that bigger. Nobody can see that. So it's just going to say the version that we're currently using. And that's the latest version on my machine. Um, I can change that to a different version if I want to run a different version. So the way I find out what's on my machine, and my machine, can you even imagine what happens when you list all the versions on my machine. Because oh, you're testing every single oh, one of yeah. them for this 15 years ago, right? So I apologize. Okay. It's going to be a little carried away. Your yeah. machine's not going to look Whoa, like hello. Bad. OK. But right. .NET Info started right, I'm trying to find where it started. It started right there. Yeah. Uh, There's right, your SDKs installed. Yeah, right here. Oh, there it is. There it is. OK, so it's. Um, I'll just, um, no, I can't get that down. Sorry. Um, I'm pff, not thinking on that one. OK, so uh, we'll just get it in there somewhere. OK, so it tells you uh, when it says version, that's going to be the latest one, which is the one that runs uh, right now if I, just say, uh, if I just say .NET something. OK, now I can uh, change which one runs by modifying the global.json. So I could make it 300 okay. or a different version. Cool. So you rarely want to do that. Don't you, like, what if you want to just use the latest version? You don't do anything. OK. OK, okay. This, is why, right. this is why I said some people misunderstand global.json. OK. Because I think for most people, just use the latest. Right. We, we're pretty, we have a pretty good track record. Um, it was sort of got added just in case we messed up so that you could like Or if you really were added. relying on something in a specific version. So this is the way people use it. And for some people, it's a really good idea. And that's if you're trying to do a deterministic build, which means today, tomorrow, the day after, the day after, it is exactly the same. Okay. And some people need that. And yeah. if that's what you need, you do want to use a global.json because it's going to pin you down and you're going to keep running exactly the same version day after day after day, not wham, somebody updated the machine, we're running something different. I see. Okay. okay. Right. Now, because that wasn't really the driving force when it was created, it doesn't do exactly what I said. <laughs> Okay. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah. All right. And so we're aware that global.json, I mean, if people are out there going, oh, that's just messed up. It, we know global.json needs some attention. We just have a pile of things we're trying to get to, and it, it's, it's So what's the, what's the edge case then? It goes forward on patches. So uh, this is ah. good or bad, depending on your okay. perspective. Okay. So if you think, yes, of course I want those security patches. What are you talking about? Of course. So if I had uh, if I had uh, 2.1.300 in the um, in my global.json, there is a 2.1.301. There might be a 302. I know there's a 301. So it would run the latest one that it would run the one it found on the machine, if the one you specified is not there. I see. So if your uh -huh. whole system is locked down to never change, then you will get the same one every time. But if you had so you really can only control to the minor version, is that what you're saying? You can, well, we have to be careful when we start saying minor. <laughs> I, like, I, you're saying I get patches, right? Okay, yes. Okay. The only reason that I'm, I'm looking odd on this <laughs> is because We're our, starting a version conversation. We, we are starting a version conversation. <laughs> okay. Earlier than we meant to, but, but I'll, I'll just real quickly say you this. The, the major, the normal, what's normally considered the major and minor version position, okay. 2.1, okay. is locked to the runtime. Okay. And that's because programmers need to know that this SDK works with that runtime. Totally makes that sense. That is not what we initially did. 
We got them out of sync a few times. Whoops. It was massively confusing. And then we had trouble on the, th trouble's not the right word. We had challenges on the conversion into the system we're using right now. Okay. So starting at 2.1.300, then the 2.1 part aligns between the SDK and the runtime. So this is gonna stay this way. So this is just like, we think we're, we're there, okay? So 2.1 is actually the runtime major minor. Okay. And then the 301, the 300 and 301, that first position, that three, yeah. or that four, okay, those numbers are the SDK feature level. Okay. Okay. And so I want to say feature level here because minor in so in I your get head, it. minor second position after, this, so after the first stop. So in a way, know? like you're trying to make it the tools and the runtime make sense to me. When I get, new, I'm new to I'm new to .NET. I am like I want. Okay, I want. I want. 2.2, so I should get 2.2.2 everything, right? And then the like the patch version numbers, I'm just like, whatever. Okay. Right, right, right. So what okay. we generally think for most people, what we think is best to do is get figure out what runtime you're running, and 2.2 .2 is still in preview, so right. today it would be 2.1. And get your 2.1, you can get the SDK and the runtime together, download them together, and that's gonna give you the latest SDK and it aligns okay. with that runtime. Okay, so does, does everybody yes, get that? Yeah, we get a lot of that? questions. Does everybody get that? Get okay, cool. All right. <laughs> I'll get to Global Tools. We'll, we'll, we'll get to Global Tools. Kathleen.net awesome. Global Tools and templates are awesome. Using it in Bionic, very powerful. Nice yeah. job. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, all right, what are we looking at again? What are we doing? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we've just done global.json. Uh, global so, yeah. and I did, uh, da, that was dash dash info, dot net dash dash oh, info. Dash dash info tells you everything you have. gives you a lot of information. And it's a place that um, if you don't know what operating system you're running, you ought to, you probably know that <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> <You're probably laughing laughs> we tell you again. So and we, we tell you what the concise. grid, which is a uh, runtime identifier, which is the way that uh, dot net .NET Core expresses what you're currently running. Okay. So, and we've got the base path and some other things in there. Okay, so um, let's come back over here. And this is just, uh, my slide deck just kind of restates what I've already said. Um, and that rolls forward only on the patch version. Okay. There, it will otherwise give you an error. Now there is another reason some people just came in in 2.1 that you may be using uh, global.json, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to go into this, um, but if you hear about custom tasks and targets or a custom SDK, it's new tasks and targets that are coming in, and that's also defined in a global.json. Okay. And the way this works is it just starts at whatever it's, wherever you did the command, and it walks up your uh, directory tree until it either finds one or gets to the top. So that is, uh, that's global.json. That seems like totally normal. Okay. okay, so now you've got your SDK. Okay. So that was what this was about. And what I, I also, I didn't say that if you look for download.net uh, core, uh, you should be able to find that and uh, get the latest uh, SDK. .net core, just go to www.dot.net. Yeah, you ready to do that? Just go, yeah, go there. All Show right, let's it. do it. Let's, uh, I got a couple things up that I'll be looking at later. Yeah, we tried to make the experience super easy on the website here. .net core. Dot, just say .dot dot net dot net bamf yeah that's it that's the website go there dot net there you go. well there okay there you go or or yeah that's it that's <laughs> or search for it that's it it's a search D -O -T. D -O -T. And and wow search. We, okay. you know are you kidding me d o t in ding brings up dot no, net's no, website d o t n e t okay yeah d o t n e t okay in search okay, yes that, that's good because that is the name of the website and it does i'm on a mac i think and <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Uh, we, we should be good from All there right, and that's how you and then if you do want an older one you can scroll down and there's a lot of there's a lot of versions available just get the latest. Oh, this is a good question. How do I purge all of my old oh, SDK yeah. and runtime versions uh, from my system? I think it's up. I know we're working on a docs. So Microsoft uh, docs is docs.microsoft.com is absolutely fantastic. And uh, I believe that we are up. I know we've been working on an article that says how do you kill them. It depends on your... Uh, it, it you throw the machine out No, you buy a new one. No, no. you can no. see no. I haven't gone around to doing it. <laughs> okay. um, so if you're on Windows, it's an uninstall. Okay. okay. All right. If you're oh, so you go and like yeah, program yeah, yeah. it's whatever it's, it's, and it's however you get rid of stuff okay. on right. your on your machine. Can you just so, go yeah. f delete stuff like right off well, disk? Well, we have things a few places. <laughs> you can. You can. I don't know if it's. You might be cleaner. So you probably you yeah. can only do it on Ubuntu apparently. That way. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. So yes, right. you can. So if you're on a Windows machine, you go. To, you know, you go to programs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. All right. 
Okay, so what I wanted to do today was to kind of walk through a little deeper, and, and I should just actually make an application here because uh, we're, the, it's super easy to make an application, but then that's boring. There's nothing else to say about it. So I'm just going to make a console app here. Uh, so I'll just do a quick uh, we'll clear this out for you. And I'm going to say .NET new console. Okay. And I'm going to put that. I'm under .NET conf, but I'm going to go uh, one level down. And dot, I can say dash O or I can say dash dash output. If you're from Windows, uh, that's the POSIX standard that we adopted, uh, which is part of Unix. And it's just a little bit overall more consistent than what was going on in Windows. So we decided to go that route. Okay. Uh, .NET uh, new console output, I need to call it something. So let's call it Hello World. Okay. Wait just a second, does some restore. Again, I'm just going to say code dot. And I'll come up there. Now, uh, in the, I'm one level up where I put the global.json. Here's the directory I just created. It's where I was when I typed uh, code space dot. OK. And now we'll look at the program file. Yay, isn't that exciting? We'll just close that. Uh, so there we go. I have a. It just needs to uh, re restore some things because it's new. Okay, there we go. That's okay. it. Okay. So, so it creates like it's a template for an application. That's a template. Yeah. All right, there you so go. now, if you want a console application, you can go to town. There's other uh, templates as you saw, but we're just going to keep things super simple today. So cool. I just wanted to have an application out there that we could play with. So creating an application is super simple. Um, you've seen stuff here at .NET Conf about where we're going with ASP.NET. Core yeah. and some of the other things we're doing. People probably heard that part of .NET Core 3 is going to be WinForms and WPF. Yeah, we're bringing I desktop. Love we're I'm making so desktop happy. modern. It's all modern. It's, it's great. It's coming to the new yeah, runtime. Yeah, yeah. I like it. So all of those things have been discussed elsewhere. And I'm going to just, you know, let that sit and I'm not going to like try to make the app any more complicated than this. What I want to do though is just talk a little bit about how things run, a little bit more detail on the CLI and SDK. Like what's happening. Yeah, but I also want to say that just like global.json, you know, for most people, most of the time, just ignore it. You don't need one. But the same thing goes here. I'm going to go a little deeper than most people need to worry about just to show a little bit more about what's going on. Let's do it. Okay. So. Let's come back over here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the project system NMS build. So some of you may have heard that we changed the project system twice. Who 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 heard who, who heard that out there? Anybody? <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's fine. so the old project system. Uh, OPS does not stand for old. It stands for original. So there's. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what OPS stands for? I believe for real? so. We I, use I think way does. too many acronyms here. We do. We do. I was thinking OPS. Is that a file? So, format? but I think part of the great thing here is that we internally, it's too easy to say old just because old and new, but it's not old and new. It's OGPS, the original gangsta. Yeah, all right, let's do it. Let's call it that. <laughs> so the thing is, is that the original system is perfectly fine. It's just complicated. Yeah, okay, okay, so there was reasons to update it. Are you but talking about the XML thing? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, the yeah, XML yeah, thing. Like with the GUIDs and the thing yeah. you're never ever ever supposed to touch the thing because no one could understand it anyways. Is well, that one? Yeah. Or, okay. Except if you're a VB coder, you have to to change yeah, your you language your version. But we're working on that too. Right. So um, yeah, it's it's big and okay. it's ugly and you don't want to have to All go right. in there. And so back in the .NET framework, like. Right, that was what, okay. that's when it started, and it was originally a file. You were never, ever going to look at it, so it could right. look horrible, and it does. And so, so gotcha. then um, Project Object. It really just tells Visual Studio on. like how to, like, what solutions oh. are in there and projects and files and all that stuff, right? It was really for VS, right? Yes, and okay. just to correct you, right. though, yeah? just to correct you a little bit, okay. it, it's mostly for MS Build. Okay. Okay, so, so MS Build runs by Visual Studio. Visual Studio accesses MS Fair. Build okay. to do that work. Fair. I, Got Visual it. Studio no, also that's a good uses point. it, but I, I just want to be a little bit precise on that. Very good point. So we have the original project system, okay, and uh, then along came ASP.NET early versions, you know, of core. When we were playing and with it, trying they, to get it cross-platform, and we were trying to think of a better format. And one of the things that was done there is it's like, we've got to make this thing simple. It is stupid complicated. Okay. So there's ideas about globbing that are very common now in the industry. Globbing just means you can use a star and get everything that matches instead of having to list every single file. Okay. So that was one of the things that really needed to go. So they came along with project.json. Okay, but the problem was is that was a new project system that was 
only going to work in certain cases. It wasn't going to work for everybody everywhere. So we have like four million .NET developers out yeah, there, and they're like all of a sudden, like, yeah, they're, they're, use and they're like, build? they're like, we we want we want that globbing stuff. We but want we like, the good stuff. Yeah. We want we we want to be able to read our files. So we need the best of both worlds. We need the best of both worlds. So they they got so basically, um, it the project system was evolved to be a new project system, which is called, I had to write CPS. Yeah, the common project system, because I want to call it the current project system. And that sounds like there might be another one. CPS. We right. hope not. So right. it's called the common project system. Okay. And it's called common because um, the MS build that it works with actually can handle the old, uh, the original and the the common it can handle so you can hand edit formats. this thing it makes sense now the new one, yeah. okay you shouldn't sure. have to do use a tool take, do you want to take a look yeah at let's it? take a look at let's, let's look take at a look thing. at so i just built this so we could so uh i'll go ahead and just give us a little bit more room here because we don't need to see the bot anymore let's kill let's hide the bot we're not killing it that's it that's that's all you need oh okay and in fact it could be quite a complex project and that's still be all you need because it knows well you know if you didn't tell me differently we think you want to use star.cs. So everything in the folder use, yeah. Yeah, are the files there. Right. Okay. Uh, so we think that everything underneath this, you know, in this tree structure that is a .cs, if you don't tell us anything else, that's what you want. Because okay. that's what you want. So, okay. so yeah, that's the So don't put anything you don't want in the project in the folder? Like, well, you can exclude you, it. You can there exclude. Is an exclude. Oh, there that's is an nice. Okay, list. then we do so, exclude. So there's things right. you can do. All right. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And, but kind of. Okay. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So um, massively simpler, just not a little bit simpler. Massively Massive. simpler. Okay, that's nice. And so this new file, the the new project system is just is just great all the way around um, when you can, you know, whenever you can use it, which is on .NET Core. Core. Okay. Right. So um, the 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 and Visual Studio actually lets us edit it too now, right? I mean, yeah, like, it does. Without having to reload, unload, yeah. and reload. The whole and like, unload okay. and, yeah, 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 and the whole yeah, thing, yeah. you don't have to do that anymore. It is still XML. Okay. But I am a huge fan of XML, and for you know, folks that want to argue with me. It was the first book I read from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we won't talk about XML too today. Um, XML allows comments, and it allows a very clear two levels of information. It allows the the actual node and it allows attributes on the node and those two levels working together can make for very simple um, explanations of, of the importance and what things relate to. So it's it's a nice system for uh, for a project system for anything with some complexity okay. uh, to it. And you know, Did we still need to change MS Build a little bit to read this? Well, thing? we yeah, have I mean, a new. It's I mean, a new MS Build. We yeah, have two I mean, MS like, Builds now. Okay, so there's two. Got two. it. There's okay. two. I was yeah. gonna say like you still, we changed the format, so we had to change the, right, the which build is system why a little bit. A, the okay. new the, the new common project system okay. can read both uh, original files and common files. Okay. And the old one has no idea. idea. Well, because it's old. About we the know. about the common file system, okay. so you it, it can't use them right all right all right so. so because there's two build systems you might need to access them both from the CLI that oh. could happen you could do that you can and this was actually I asked on Twitter for some people who could you know have some questions that maybe we'd want to answer today and I hope you're keeping up with what we're getting asked here because I don't want to I am I'm totally keeping that. up they're okay. actually just saying how much they love XML up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. all right so um, anyway the question was when do you use .NET build and when do you MS build slash T okay I've, sorry I forgot what the what slash, slash T, T is mean for. I'm sorry I forgot but that's the way you on the command line with .NET uh, CLI, you do MS Bill slash T, and I don't remember what the slash T okay. stands for. I, sorry about that. Too legit. If somebody on the team is watching, you can jump in here and remind me what slash T stands for. Um, but anyway, this just talks about the different, uh, which what each one of them does. So if you say .NET Build, you're using the .NET Core, which is that, that um, common project system, uh, the newer system, you're using that build system. 
If you say MS Build, you're using the older uh, original system, the .NET for .NET Framework. So okay. that's the difference. Okay. And then there's some other things up there. We There's some defaults that seem logical, like you actually don't want to forget the restore step because then your build isn't what you thought it was going to be. And you're so like, automatically restores when you do a build. Yeah, that makes which sense. Which Visual Studio does. Okay, and you right, may be right. quite used to doing. Because it didn't do that before, right? Yeah, had, for a while yeah, it didn't. Yeah. Okay, for a while so it I remember didn't. like, yeah, well, why am I yeah, doing yeah. this? Okay. Yeah, and it was a very easy mistake okay. to make. So, so that's nice. Yeah. So it does some things. Uh, it minimizes the verbosity and uh, it's parallel by default. And just various little things. Uh, the, the original file system uh, doesn't do... Uh, parallel builds, which are particularly important when doing multi-targeting, okay. because you can spin yeah. up several at once, and that can really reduce the time. And we are constantly, constantly trying to make that better. We know we will never be fast enough, but we're going to... Well, we did speed up we build time significantly way, way in 2.1, right? Okay, 2.1. We actually, so like, someone actually says the T question. command can specify a target. A target. I'm okay. using it right now, actually. All right. Okay, great. All right. Okay. So that, that, um, thank, thank you for the education. So now I'm just not quite sure why you would need it. Why do you need it without specifying the target? Yeah. Next question. So it could have just been the way an email came to me and I may be confused. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that. Because so, I actually double checked this one. I, I, I asked for this one. What would so, be the point? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. The, the totally. Target good point. is also defined in the project. So All right. Well, the, the, sure, the yeah. key anyway. the key point to the slide though is that .NET Build is doing some things for us by default. That makes sense. So right. And can, you so. probably want .NET Build almost all the time. Okay. So that's probably what you want. Cool. And then any additional, you can pass a lot of extra stuff on down to to the. There's quite a few switches you can put on that. Okay. Okay. Cool. So um, we just did that. Let's go forward. Uh, before we go on, let me uh, go ahead and build the thing we wrote. So I'm going to say .NET build. Okay. Ta da! Yeah. It built. Okay. Uh, actually, it didn't build. What is it? So you have an error. Yeah, I have an error. They have, and oh, people look, it's at an home MS probably have figured out what it is. I'm not in the right place. So uh, slash t. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm totally kidding. That's, that's good. No, <laughs> I decided to create this as hello world, and I was not in the hello world directory. So oh. it's going. We have no idea. We do not see a project file. So would you mind telling us what we should do? And I could have done this a few other ways. I could have told it where the file was, but instead I just changed the directory. And now when I say build. Uh, it should come back and it's doing the restore and it says build succeeded. Which Got it. Is what I wanted to see. Okay, so you either need to be in the directory or you need to specify where the project or solution file is to build. That totally yeah. makes sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. User error. See? Got it. Do you want? Do you, should I change it and say hello dot net conf or are you good? Yeah, change it and say hello dot net conf. Or <laughs> we like right, bots. We where that. are the bots, people? You want bots? bots? We do want, you want bots. bots. Do you need bots? We all love bots. You know, I can tell you where there's bots, so I can go get bots. <laughs> How do you, is, it, is it like We this? like big bots. Is that the way you want me to bring yeah, it? There you go. Let's, let's do it. Like let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So uh, you really want bots? Yeah. Let's, let's go ahead. Just say .NET Conf. Because, you know, like okay, honestly, you haven't right actually wrote, written a line of code yet. I just I changed the line of code. <laughs> you just changed the line of code. I changed the line of code. So, awesome. uh, yeah, let me. Uh, I, I, that just is how I make sure that the save happened, um, is to leave it and go so back. So this isn't a fake like, demo. We can do what? Oh, it is a fake demo. Hello, world. I mean, you got to build this again, right? Awesome. Now run it. Oh, wait. What happened here? What? Did, uh, oh, dear. Now we're, now we're in trouble. What happened? Did you save the file? I thought I did. Uh, it's Let's get rid of the release notes. It's looking are you, are you in like a another directory possibly that you practiced? You were a practice <laughs> it certainly directory. Certainly is possible since you, <laughs> but I didn't think so. .NET Conf, hello world. Uh, so my home sees our problem. We're not going to stay on this too long, but I am a little bit confused right now. What directory is Because you it looks, I am in .NET Conf, hello world. Uh, I've got those guys there. Um, I don't want to know why. I can tell you why. Why? You are absolutely right. I messed ah, myself up. You are with, in the wrong directory. I'm, You're like in no, test or I, something. No, I'm not in the wrong directory, but what? I messed myself up What'd with you do? my. This is not how you run an application. I just spaced what? on this. This is not how you run this application. I'm going to talk more about this. But this is a DLL. So if we actually, uh, let's do something to make huh? our life a little bit easier here. I'm going to go back to this build. Okay. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to give it an output directory, which I'm going to call um, fd app, 
Um, I'll, I'll explain later why I'm calling it that. And so now um, I should be able to kill the bin in, in OBJ directories. And I want to uh, show what's in that directory. So I just call it FD app. And so now this is where my output of the build just went. And I'll tell you why Hello World worked in just a minute, uh, because that is really the, the real question right now is why did Hello World uh, work? So if you see here, there's a, a couple of files, but you will see that there is no executable file. Right, okay. Because uh, by default, we build DLLs. .NET Core builds DLLs, yep. not executables. Okay? okay. So uh, what I need to do to actually run this, and let's do that first, is to say .NET, and then I need to give it the, the from here, how do I find that executable? And I'm not in the FD app uh, uh, directory. So I'll say that first, and then I'll say hello world, and then I'll say DLL. And now I should say hello.NET conf, okay? Now, step one. Okay. Okay. But wait. So, but we. Built, How did Hello World? But, we, but the build. But it didn't. How did Hello World ever work? Is the right. question yeah. you got. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, exactly yeah. what I'm asking. This is where I messed myself up from my from my practicing from my demo. Okay, I happen to have, and I'll get back to what this you, means. You had a practice. practice directory somewhere. No, I have oh. a global tool because I could oh. never have run. I could never run a DLL based on that. Okay, I have a global tool that is called Hello World. I see. Which was a bad which would it was work it was it was over overwriting you just now basically. Uh, the, basically, yeah. So uh, we'll get back to more about what a, yeah, so a global tool is. Tool. So global tool, tool. tool. Okay. is uh, it, it's something that it's a console app. Okay. That when we install it, we put a special shim on it so that it acts like an executable. And I'll talk more about that shim and, and what we're doing with that whole idea. Okay. So with the with the shim on that, and then we put it into your path. Okay, so what a global tool is, is an executable that we help you create that goes into the, onto your path, into a special location on your path, and then from any place on your machine, on that path, any shell where that path is active, you're going to be able to run that that global tool. So like the community can create global, global tools and you just plug right in and it's like, makes it, it, so it makes the CLI extensible. It absolutely makes the CLI okay. extensible and we do, the install comes through NuGet. So we already have a good place, a, a good place to go put them, okay. um, so people can find them. We're definitely still working through kinks on this. Particularly, they're hard to find right now. Okay. We don't yet have a good search, and that it's just because we have to coordinate um, a lot to make that happen. But if you go to NuGet, um, and we're working on being able to search for tools, uh, I think we need somebody in the community to just create like globaltools.net. Uh, you, you know what? Uh, we've got a little bit of help from that. Nate McMaster's um, has a GitHub site where people can add their tools. But cool. yes, uh, we, we've talked about a desire to download, and I mean, we could help somebody write that part to go to NuGet yeah. every day or every hour. Pull, the tools. pull them all down. You know, oh, maybe we should up. do that. I don't know. Right, maybe we should. <laughs> but then we need to run a website someplace that has that. So I know. We had a few, still, like .NET, maybe. You know, honestly, I know this sounds a little insane, <laughs> but it would be a great global tool to find global tools, okay? so That's so meta, Kathleen. It is so, so meta. meta. But if somebody wants to work on that, we just, we just need you know a website someplace that has a... Um, uh, has the ability to you know get back a list, preferably with some stats and ownership. Um, that can give a list in a global tool that can then uh, just display those. So oh, cool. we yeah. haven't written that yet. We know we ba this is yeah. badly needed, but it's you know if somebody wants to write that, just I'll give it a shot. I got a lot of like maybe time during Christmas. Do you? Like, yeah. All right. I was well, thinking of rewriting the dot at conf site myself uh, okay. for Christmas, well, but we can, I, I can add this, this to the list. We, so. we this is definitely yeah. on our work item to to have a more uh, complete answer for this. We're kind of muddling along on that side of it, but but that's what happened. It's why when I typed Hello World. Yeah, discover.net. This .net. shouldn't you have. Uh, Luke, you put it there. You know, that guy's site is super awesome. Is Dis it? Discover.net. All right. Oh, yeah. We all totally right. Well, like. Well, get, get in touch with me because I'm, yeah. I'm all over trying to solve this one. Absolutely. So I have an executable in my path called Hello World. That's the only reason that this worked. Should I make that even bigger? Let's yeah, you can make it a little bigger. bigger. So that's the reason Hello World worked. To actually run this, um, what I need to do is .net. Uh, then I need to give the path to the DLL, which is FD app, and then hello world, and then I need to give the DLL as well. And now um, the .NET is a, it's an application, of course, and that application can do several different things, one of which is act as an app host to run, as it is right now, to run a DLL. 
All right. So there we go. All right. I'm actually glad we made that mistake. Because <laughs> we could explain. It, it sounds good. Our it sounds mistakes. Good we, yeah, glad we made good. it. Okay, so let's talk about that. And this really should not be executable, as I should have named this section a little bit more like running stuff. And you just saw one way, the common way to run stuff. And so it's like, I want to go fix my slide here. It's really annoying me that much. Uh, are you going to let me fix my slide? Oh, you're going to do live edits I'm to PowerPoint do now? I'm going to live edits Whoa. to PowerPoint. Whoa, uh, hold on. Your app. Okay, because that's, that's just it was a terrible name. And uh, it's just, that's, uh -oh, I don't want to do, go to my boot camp. Okay, come on, start the app. Ah. Come on. Did it work? Did it work? It's work? black. It's black. Is it coming back? It's not coming back. Build oh gosh, PowerPoint. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. See, I don't think we should have tried that. I think we did the wrong thing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, there you it's, go. like, it's flipping out. I've got two different things on the two different screens. Oh boy. All right. Okay, it really wow. is not on my screen. <laughs> well, you got it there. Okay. Well, let's see how it goes. Okay, so. <laughs> Told you. Live editing. Live editing was a bad idea. It's a live so, show, people. Yeah, my, I, I do not seeing this on my on my uh, monitor, really seriously. It says my boot camp on it. It's, I've got my, my parallels partition. Oops. Uh, is that, okay. Right. And, look oh, at unfortunately, it. I'm not. Uh, oh gosh! Um, okay. I think we just locked it up. No, we, it's not that bad. Okay, you okay. Got it back. I'm just like You're in back. presenter mode. I think I'm back. Ah, there we All go. All right. Okay. Woo. What you just saw was a framework dependent app, and there was absolutely no. <laughs> what's a framework it's, dependent it's app? It's on. A, it's a Friday afternoon, so I uh, I have no idea what's in that bottle. Um. All right. Me neither. <laughs> Okay, it was a framework dependent app. That's what you just saw. Okay, so it's got a simple published directory. It was small. Uh, you have to type the, the name of it. Uh, and all apps share the same copy of the framework. This is super important because it's going to go and run the runtime now. We, had, we talked about how to get the right SDK earlier. Now we're talking about what runtime is going to be in place. Okay. So uh, every app on the machine can use the same version of the framework. So uh, I, I'm saying that a little bit too generally because you will normally... It can, but it doesn't have to, it right? It can because the project file normally lists what your target framework is, so what what version of the framework you want to run against. Okay. So one app might be running against 2.0 and one might be running against 2.1. Okay. All good. Okay. So uh, and in ASP.NET in particular, this is good because you may have many apps on one machine. also means that your operations team determines when you have an updated version of the runtime. Okay. So if a patch comes out, then the operations team decides whether or not to apply um, you're going to apply that. Okay. okay. So the next thing that we've got is called a self-contained app. Okay. A self-contained app is an executable, um, and I'm going to build one in just a second. It's got a rather large publish directory. We can take a look at that. Uh, it does create an executable. It does create a very big Hello World. I think it's about 250 megabytes. Um, it's great for a standalone deploy. So if what you want is to uh, create an application and it's going to go run off on just like it's going to run someplace and you don't want to ever have to worry about putting the runtime there separately. It carries it along with so it. So it's like an entire folder though of stuff, isn't it? Right? It's it not a single is. EXE. And I'll, I'll show you that in okay. just a second. And one thing I want to point out here is that you see that it says dash R. And that stands for the, the runtime that you're, the fr framework that you're running against. Or it's actually the platform, I'm sorry, that you're running on. And so with .NET Publish, then um, if you say dash R, then it's going to go for that specific platform. So let's take a look and see what that's going to look like. Is this going to come up? Uh, it didn't come up. Let's Try going like a... Uh, kill. I need to kill. Uh, I'm up in... Um, uh, Can you go into presentation? Mode? I'm trying to get out of presentation mode. So if you, well, you're, you're uh, oh, you're in future. Oh. Um, yeah, there's nowhere you want to be. Um, you're on a Mac, so it's usually Windows P, but I don't know. Yeah, the problem is I don't have a, I don't have a, there I have it. We're going to end the show again, and we're going to. Yeah, maybe that was it. Uh, try to find. <laughs> There we go. Hey, I see your screen. And now. then there I'll start back up in just a minute after we do this. All right. All right. Okay. So what I want to do is .NET uh, publish, um, and you, the publish only puts things into the right output directory when you're just doing a, a, a framework dependent app because okay. there's not that much to it. Uh, but now we're going to say dash r, and I'm on uh, OS X uh, 64. 
Trying to remember what the RID is. I'll tell you what you do when you can't remember. RID, RID. runtime ID? Runtime identifier, Fire. right. Okay. And there's a list, a uh, runtime identifier list. So you can go here and say there's the Windows, ah. there's Linux. Uh, and if we scroll down, we're going to see the Mac ones. So it's OS X X64. That looked like a lot of X's in my head. So I tried to take one out. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And now we're going to do an output to, and we're going to just call this self contained app. So we'll create a new directory, and that way we're going to be able to compare the two. All right? Cool. So we get another successful build. And oh, it was a publish. That's why we didn't get build, build succeeded. Oh, publish. Right. OK, so I'm going to So say, now we have a folder of stuff. Right. So this is, again, the framework dependent app. OK. And this is the self-contained app. OK. So we, have, we take that whole folder, and we can put it on another Mac it doesn't have any right, .NET on right, it, and right, it'll right. run. But look. Is that what you're saying? Yes, we absolutely can, but look. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is great for some situations, okay? But these two together really aren't everything that we should have. Uh, we're, we have some more things coming, and that's why that next slide says future. I want one EXE, Kathleen. Can we, can we do that? We're working on it, but okay. that's not where we're going to go next. Oh, come on. Please behave. <laughs> this is just so cool. All right, we got a question while you're figuring that out. Please. What if I we want to make a JIT compiler interpreter for .NET Core? The goal is to run, I'm thinking ASP.NET apps or .NET apps without com recompiling all the app every time we save a file. Probably ASP.NET. Instead, we compile in the runtime only what we need to run, just like PHP. Is that applicable? If so, what do we need to know to accomplish that? So they they, so want, they basically want to like save yeah. save an ASP net app and have it come so out automatically. I, I I will tell you that I have kind of a knee jerk reaction that that's going to be super hard. But I also know that some of the folks that work on the the compiler team blow me away sometimes. They're pretty smart. Huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. So basically, we have an incremental compiler. It builds this big you know syntax semantic trees. Mm -hmm. And they then it normally outputs, and we run from there. You'd have to hold that, okay. basically, because the way that this strongly typed language works is you've got to kind of have all your references. You have to be able to get the whole nine yards there yeah. to completely interpret the semantics of it. And so the, it's going to be. Uh, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it would more or less be a way that that we because mm. Rosin would just have to kind of keep being there. Um, Wouldn't you be able to, like, maybe, like, I don't know, just, when you save the file, like, do background compile? Or well, something? some of the background, so you could do something like that, like that you know, right. Maybe, or so, maybe that would help the scenario, at least. Right, right. And I don't know that scenario, the, the, the CLI scenario. Right now, we do spin up the process and kill it, spin up the process and kill it. And uh, we, we've done a little bit of work with some background stuff to get some of the JIT to okay. speed things up. But uh, sometimes I do wake up at night and wonder whether we should actually be keeping something running in the background for the purpose of performance and some other things. Let's just talk to Rodrigo Compera. All right. Hey, we are working on it. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Can't Great. Fantastic. So let's cool. go back to yeah. let's go back to my slides for a second. So I want to talk about framework dependent uh, executable. And so this is um, it has a simple published directory. The executable gets created and apps share a framework. Okay, and it rolls forward. So it's got the best of these two worlds together. Okay. Um, what we basically do is that an executable has to be specific to the platform it's running on. An executable can't be just like anything. The, D the DLLs we're creating, they can run anywhere. But an executable has to be created for this particular platform. Uh, right. And okay. so what wound up happening, and we put it out first with Global Tools because it just happened, we could control the creation very carefully there because we're in charge of that process. So we created the shim that we use for Global Tools. Mm -hmm. That was the first place we saw this. And now this is uh, is going to be coming out in either 2.2 or 3.0. I don't know what milestone we're hitting it uh, on. but. Uh, this is the, the way you get to that, and I'm actually going to skip showing you what's in the directory, but it's almost like the first directory where we just had the DLL and a couple of th other things. There's a DLL and an executable because we're creating that shim for cool. you that still calls in, but it, but you have I mean, to be read specific now. Yeah, I'm platform specific okay. now because you I have see. to say right. what you're, where you're going to run it. Um, so the DLL can still run anywhere. But you need to create the exe piece has to be for the platform you're running on okay. because that's what brings in the right 
the framework for that for that current gotcha. platform. Gotcha. So you have yeah. automated builds. You probably are building all all this like. That's if you like. So there's two ways to think about it, right? Like I could say, well, maybe I just give them a DLL and have it JIT, like, or maybe I want to like pre-compile it all together and well, like, and for now, a spe specific platform. Is that like the so kind of the two all options? Of this is, all of this is pre-JIT. Okay. okay. So this is just going to be how do we get the the IL bits into okay, the right gotcha. machine? All okay. Right, so got it. so we just because we have to point out the app host that shim that okay. we. That we create as, a, as a, this executable, this new thing, it has to go out and get the right copy of the runtime. Okay. That wasn't a problem with self-contained because it's just use the one that's already in the directory. Right. Use everything that's right. already in the directory. Okay. And so that was the challenge of getting that done, and that work is now um, it's done. And if you have nightly builds, you can take a look at it, uh, and it's just going to be a little tiny bit bigger than the. And we know this is something people have been waiting for, and we're so we're very excited that we've got it at a point that we're comfortable. Uh, releasing it because we know it's it's it means that you can start uh, looking at we can well we have to do some work to do things like in Windows being able to put an icon on and stuff like that that's not really I it. see I got gotcha. you it's just kind of a simple little executable okay all cool. right awesome that's so uh, let's uh, let's see what else we've got here today I'm gonna um, oh also Ooh, the future this is, yeah this is another future um, we have in pre preview a linker. So this is another way you can Aha. work with self-contained apps. That's what I was really wondering. Yeah, what's going on with the linker? The linker. Yeah. So the linker has is we're still uh, it, it's it's still in, it's still in preview. Okay, okay. All right. it's still on my get, and you can get, but you can find out about it at that link. Okay, um, and then uh, it removes unused assemblies, which means it might break your code. All right, so uh, use this carefully. It's you the reason reflection. that we yeah. are moving carefully okay. is because. You, we there are scenarios, absolutely you will you will break in production, and we can't guarantee that's not down some side path that doesn't happen until your vice president. Well, is I mean that's why it's a preview, but you could try it on a copy yeah. of your production. Yeah, yeah, and let us know just, if just it works or absolutely. not. Absolutely, okay. and, and test it and look at it. There's yeah. some certain areas we know is broken. If you have something that it's broken on that you think it should work on, but we're not ready to make this a default because. We don't want to break anybody, so okay. we're we're we'll be working on this and figuring out the best way to introduce it. I think that the technology, the guys, have, that's fantastic. The teams have worked very well on that. I think that the technology is good, but we don't quite have the right way to incorporate it. We and need we'll more feedback. That. That's yeah. what we need. great. That's, that's we just did actually did a um, a survey on that. Cool. So you know, I'm gonna like really fly we'll vote the CEO tools. out. <laughs> Like that's a comment. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm gonna be kind of light on tools because we already yeah, saw we're, one. Yeah, I'm we're, just gonna talk about how this works, and because I'm a little afraid of having my machine uh, go. Uh, we have a, a little slide problem there, but that's okay. <laughs> it's, it's cool. all right. So global tools. Let's talk about global tools. Global tools are available right now. Um, you get them by saying .NET Tool install uh, slash g my tool slash g stands for global. And yes, the implication is we will do local tools, and that's consistent with NPM. We don't want you to have to think two different ways, one when you're doing NPM uh, package management and one when you're doing uh, .NET package management. So we use NuGet um, with all the NuGet things, including uh, NuGet config, so you can go to your own feeds. Um, you can go to uh, whatever your own feeds are. You can go locally uh, if you like. So this is installed in your path. I talked about this earlier. It's a framework dependent app that we build a shim for, mm -hmm. um, and that which provides the app host so that you can just run it, which is why I could just run Hello World. So we've already seen this. Right. Okay. Accidentally. Yeah, so <laughs> we got that. Okay. We're just a little ahead there. So we're coming, uh, we're working on the, um, we still work on the details, but we're working on details of what will be local tools. For a while, we call this repo tools, but we honestly don't know where your repo is, so we can't. It sounds like we know, and we don't, so we're just going to call it local tools. And this works differently. Um, so it won't have a G. It might have a local, but we're leaning right now to just like NPM. If you don't have G, it's local. So that's where we're leaning right now. Okay. Again, we don't want you to have to think differently when you come to .NET land. Also from NuGet, um, and there's a repo manifest now. And so uh, what we expect to have happen is that from whenever you run a command, it will start looking um, if you say, and you'll say .NET for this because you, you have to be in our world. We have to have code running. So .NET space, and then if it's hello world, .NET space hello world, and then it would look up the directory stack for a repo manifest. We're still working on what to call that. 
and then when it finds one, um, it will find out where to go get it, which will be in the NuGet cache so that you can control how things are on your machine. You can share it. You don't have one for yeah, every, makes every copy. So yeah. the manifest will be repo-based is what we expect, and then uh, we'll store it in NuGet. And it will still be a framework-dependent app with a shim. So all that will be the same. Oops. Version numbers we already talked about. We already kind of talked about that one. We can skip that. Skip okay, that so uh, this just We're making it better. You can talk about it more. Yeah. yeah. You can so. read more about it. Yeah. <laughs> read more about it. You can talk about it if you fixing want Fixing it all. And, uh, oops, we don't need that. We already did, we did demos, that. didn't we? Okay, I'm just trying oh to get gosh. to my last slide. Oh, my Where's gosh. My there it is. There's my last, last slide. slide. Oh, all right. All right. This so, is a yeah, lot of fun. This is fantastic, yeah. actually. So, all right. Um, we looks like we, ha we have like we have people just talking amongst themselves right now, helping each other out, actually. Um, so, yeah. everybody, any questions out there? Uh, we, somebody's searching for some mono PR number, so hopefully they can figure that out themselves. I'm not really sure uh, what they're talking about. It sounds like maybe somebody there. had mentioned it earlier. Uh, I did not mention a mono PR number. Sounds like somebody oh, has, a, has a oh, global oh, tool oh, there, too. Uh, if, if the, the linker. Number, that oh. might be about the linker. Because oh, I, it I don't is, know. It's, but, but we've taken the, uh, we took the, the mono uh, linker, okay. and then we, we kind of dot netified it. So uh, it is... But Mono's done that too, right? It, it is. Okay. It, it is. Right. But it, we just... It was just brought more into dot net core, and it okay. was created. It's a, a NuGet package on my get. And uh, dot net dash core dot linker is what I think, aka dot ms. Um, okay. Do you want me to... Well, try it out. To go find that? Um, I can maybe find I that think, right here. Yeah, maybe. Uh, hang on just a second. It's, if it's handy, fast. it's a question. Well, if I can find my mouse, it'll be handy. But There's my your mouse. mouse is, it's flying on the screen there. My mouse ah. keeps just being whacked. All right, so um, I'm. I just. Uh, Here's a question: Does the exe file still included on the 2.2 publish? Or is the exe file still included on the 2.2 publish? I would assume 2.2 preview. Um. The uh, the linker was, uh, I'm sorry, I just went past the linker again. Just a second, I'm getting the linker yeah. for you. The linker is on this slide. There you go. There's the link. Ah, okay, there's that's the, the one you okay. want. So yeah, okay, the, uh, the, 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 the sorry, the, two, does two. the exe file still, is the exe file still included in the 2.2 publish? So it, in the preview? Still, if you it must was, be playing it with the preview. should be. It should be. Um, I said I wasn't sure whether that was in 2.2 or 3. If it is in 2.2 already, it won't. I don't think it'll be pulled out. I don't think that would happen. Yeah, we just released Preview um, 2 on Wednesday, so do you know offhand what's on Preview 2? I do two? not know. Okay, it I might, just, it might I be coming. I didn't track, out, didn't track down okay. uh, which version that's in. I apologize for that. Give it a shot. Um, and, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. So uh, I guess we are done. I just want to, like, give you a big hug yeah. because oh, that's so good I to miss see you. you. I love you so much. So all you. right, guys. Thank you so much for a uh, great show, a uh, great conference. And we have coming up, I think we got some game development coming up. We next, do. It's fantastic. All right, all right guys. All right. Whoop. Whoop. See ya.